Okay, well, Skip and Katie, man, it seems like I've met you before somewhere. <laughs> Actually, for people who are just tuning in, we've done this two or three times already, and that's why. But your father and daughter team have this wonderful little idea uh, that makes wine so much special for everybody. I mean, you think you have to be some big wine connoisseur, and it's just a simple process of aerating the wine, right? So how yeah, did absolutely. you come up with this idea? Yeah, well, uh, when Katie was in college, she went to school in Walla Walla, Washington, which is just fantastic wine country. Ah, and so they, my teach wife that and I, at, they teach that at college? Is that a... Well, I, I wish they did. Once, we, once we got done visiting with her, we would go to all the wine reasons. I see. And once we were there, you just learn all the stories about how passionate they are about making wine and how beautiful it is. Then you go in the tasting room, and they just pour it out of a bottle. And it seemed like all this beauty and effort that went into making the wine, the pour wasn't very special. So I kind of just thought about it for a little bit, went to, got a couple corks, cut them in half, went to Starbucks, stole a bunch of straws, went in my basement, drilled them out, and lo and behold, my concept worked. So the idea is just simply taking wine and being able to separate the streams so that the wine can naturally breathe and it makes the pour more aesthetically pleasing. Wow. But it, it is, you have, you have a one there you could show them? Show us uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll have Katie pour it. She okay. seems to be much so better at this than me. <laughs> She's better at everything. <laughs> you don't want to so dirty your pants. So here's the device right, right here. Uh -huh. So it just uh, sticks in like a cork, right? Yep, it just yeah. sticks inside. So you yeah. can ah, take right. it out. Okay. This is what it looks yeah. like up close. Uh -huh. And then just sort of... Not too hard, just sort of stick it in where the cork was. Uh -huh. And then let's see if we can get the white background on here. Okay. Ah, I see. So that air is the, those three things that are coming down, pouring little straws right. that yep. aerates it. Wow. So we separated the streams into yeah. three, and the ambient air in between the streams just allows the wine to catch a breath of air uh -huh. as it gracefully, beautifully falls into your glass. And you and can also. It, it's great. And once you turn the device over, it's drip free. It doesn't drip. Ah, wow. So. <laughs> That'll save a lot on tablecloths. You know, when I'm pouring wine, it's <laughs> good. at our house. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a great gift for people. That, you know, coming for dinner, that instead of figuring out what they w people want for wine, you bring one of these things a as Absolutely. a gift, and it works Absolutely. for anything. Absolutely. Really fun. It makes the evening so much better. Everybody will get a lot of pleasure from from having the and pour the, and aerating the wine themselves, you can taste so, an immediate difference between the wine. It's they're fantastic. so reasonable, too. I mean, they're, what, like 30 bucks or something like that. Where yeah. Actually, the early bird people got it for like 20 bucks, right? They, they certainly did. Yeah. They certainly did. <laughs> so, so you right can have a half started. a dozen of these around the house to keep for the next time you need a, a quick <laughs> gift for somebody. All right. Because you're on Kickstarter now, right? Uh, raising money. And I guess, Katie, you're the one that had to convince the old guy there that this is the way to do things, huh? <laughs> yeah. Well, he actually suggested Kickstarter. He heard about it from somebody, but then I started looking into it and realized, like, wow, this is totally something we could do. We sort of checked out some of the other projects from uh -huh. around Portland that had been successful and that were also products and sort of tried to model our campaign off of what we saw in theirs. Um, and so there was a lot of uh, time that we put into figuring out, okay, we want to make a video and we just set up our rewards this way. And it was a really interesting process to go through because beforehand, none of us had really been experienced with Kickstarter. But we just decided to go for it and sort of learn from the people who had been on there before. So it's been and a really fun process. It out. But you figured it out so much, man. You made your quota in like three days and two hours, right? You got twelve hundred bucks. Yeah, twelve thousand two uh, twelve thousand five hundred dollars, right? That was your 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 uh, quota, and, and and you're still going, man. And you're up to <laughs> almost seventeen thousand dollars, and you got three four hundred people that want this thing already, and you haven't even made them. So now you got to run out and make these things, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's really been an amazing ride. You know, when we when we started Kickstarter, we we wouldn't know if we should guess that we're going to sell 50 of them or 500 of them. You just you wouldn't even know what's going to happen. And I kind of always thought people that get involved in Kickstarter, they had some kind of magic formula. They hired an outside company to help them with strategy. 
And since it was just the two of us doing it, and I was very little help. So you're really keeping all this in the house, right? I mean, I mean, you're, Katie, you just got out of college, right? Didn't want to go work for <laughs> some big conglomerate. And, <laughs> and you're spending more time with dad, aren't you? How is that going? It's been, it's been great. Yeah. It's, it's, really, it's really good. Uh, I would love it. You know, hang, having my boys around a lot. Uh, uh, there's nothing better, I think, and it, it's so nice that you guys are able to work together like this and, and still be together. There's nothing like it. And Kate, you got a great dad there because he's working this with you, and he seems like a nice guy that he's not, you know, telling you what to do every minute. <laughs> yeah, it's been really fun. And actually, the whole family's kind of involved. My little brother, who just turned 18, made our Kickstarter video for us. Oh, really? He directed and wow. edited that. Yeah. No kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so it is a family. See, I think Dad has so much business experience, he learned how to write off the whole project. See? <laughs> now, all, all the wine tasting is a business expense. It's brilliant. I, right. <laughs> <laughs> and you just came back from wine country this afternoon or whatever. Right. Absolutely. Wow. So how do you see it? I mean, do you have other like distribution in mind or what's going to happen after this, you think? Yeah, we just talked about it in the car for the last three hours driving home. So what we what we want to do is we want to start very organically. We want to just be able to sell them ourselves. We want to try to sell them within the wine community the very, very best we can. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of uh, young business people, they just want to try to make as much dough as they can, yeah. as fast as they can. Right. And so the thought of us going to big retailers is maybe a little too complex for us mm -hmm. also, because big retailers, they have their own supply yeah. chain, their own right. dating, their own deliveries. There are so many things that they need to do, and that's why they're so big. But the right. fact that we're so small, we're not sure that we could really service them adequately. So I think we're going to continue on with just trying to be very endemic. We're going to stay with just wine retailers. We're going to stay with wineries. We're going to stay with restaurants. And we're going to try to do um, the ordering process ourselves. We do have a fulfillment partner that we've identified in Los Angeles okay. who's going to be able to be able to do all the right. shipping for us. But it's one step at a time. And I think right. as each opportunity comes up, then you're just you're confronted with something new. And we'll, we'll, we'll cross that bridge to get to it. Absolutely. That's the fun part of life. If you knew what was going to happen every day, that'd be boring as hell. Yeah. <laughs> totally. What the heck, you know? <laughs> but this is, I mean, was this in your mind? I mean, like right before you retired from Nike or, or was it just something happened by accident? Yeah, you know, I think, you know for, for ever since I was a little kid, I used to yeah. mix my food together and ask why things can't be different, why things can't be better. I think that's always just been part of my DNA. And uh, and so I have three patents now. I have two more in the patent office. Wow. And they're all very eclectic and they're all very weird and they all solve a problem, I think, if that's the common theme. And so, you know, the reality is once I uh, got to my 31 years at Nike and I found that it was a really appropriate time for me to leave, I was like, wow, I know what I'm going to do tomorrow. I think a lot of people, when they leave their corporate jobs, they're lost. They, exactly. They're going to go, oh, I'm going to play golf. I'm going to clean my garage. I'm yeah. going to go on a road trip. Yeah. I, you know, for me, I couldn't wait. I, I loved every day that I was at Nike. And I also have to say that from the day I left, I love everything that I'm doing right now. And working yeah. with Katie is, is one of those special things, too. Well, it, you have your heart into both your relationships at work and your business itself, and that's a wonderful way to live. And, and you're an inspiration to the rest of us. To, so if we if we retire, the only thing to do is get out and do something better. <laughs> yeah, really. You gotta re know what you're retiring to, right. not what you're retiring from. Probably. Everybody worries about what they've been Absolutely. doing. You gotta think about what you're I mean, gonna. You're going to live 34, 40 more years, longer than the, your last job. So. <laughs> <laughs> so so, to get this, it's really the best place is go to, uh, uh, what, where did it go? Okay, uh, Tribella Wine, right? T-R-I-B-E-L-L-A-W-I-N-E.com, right? And then you go to it. Kickstarter there, buy as many as you can because you'll need them as gifts or whatever. It's a great thing for everybody. I'm going to get one so I don't mess up my tablecloth and I look like a fancy <laughs> wine, wine connoisseur. <laughs> well, Kate, Katie and Skip, you're just wonderful people, and thanks for being out there and contributing uh, so much. Th for thanks the for the time of today. It was really great. It was great fun. Let's do it again sometime. Over a glass of wine, though. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, that'll be for the fourth time, not again. <laughs>
There you go. It'll be great. Thank you. Thanks. Adios. Bye.